Hello fellas and welcome. Today I will present you a product so strange, so obscure that probably lots of you haven't heard of it and even less are aware of its exact working principle. Without further ado, behold the mighty vortex tube utilizing the rank Hughes effect. I know you would ask what the heck is a vortex tube. Well, it's a really simple mechanical contraption or probably I shouldn't say mechanical as there are no moving parts in it. Yes, you heard me right. There are no moving parts in this thing. So it's a really simple contraption where you input compressed air and the device separates it into one really cold and one really hot air streams. I won't go into details how this thing works. For me, it's a pure black magic. And I think that even Rank and Hughes themselves won't be able to fully explain how their device works, but it really works. The vortex tube I have is made in China and the model is SWVA08. You can buy it from AliExpress. I will place a link in the description below. By manufacturer specifications, it requires a minimum pressure of 6.5 bars and a constant airflow of 220 liters per minute. When those requirements are met, you can expect a cooling capacity of 530 BTU an hour. Like I told you, the device has one input port equipped with 8 mm pneumatic push to connect fitting. On the hot side, you can see the removable air muffler. Beneath the muffler is the airflow and temperature regulating screw. Decreasing the airflow and you get a lower cold temperature. On the cold side, there's only a thread for attaching the adjustable cardan tube. I think it's finally time for some tests. This will be my test setup. Using an ordinary household compressor, I will input a compressed air into the vortex tube while measuring the temperature on its output ports using two identical thermometers. And to eliminate any doubt in the accuracy of the Chinese thermometers, here is the professional fluke temperature and humidity meter, 24.9, 25, 25. I think that's more than accurate. As you can see, the temperature on the two sides of the vortex tube is more or less the same. Let's release the compressed air and see what will happen. Almost minus 6 degrees Celsius versus 35. Let's cut the air supply. Slightly more visualizing experiment. Take a look how this black piece of plastic will catch frost.
To demonstrate you that the rapid expansion of the compressed air ain't the main reason for the low temperatures at the cold end of the vortex tube, I will do another experiment using the same compressor. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the rapid expansion ain't playing a vital role in the process, but it's not the main reason for the freezing air. Here I have this blowing pistol connected directly to the same compressor I was using in the vortex tube experiment with a nozzle far smaller than the nozzle of the vortex tube. Let's see what temperature can we reach when blowing compressed air directly on the temperature sensor. about 19 degrees, way above the minus 6 we were getting with the vortex tube. I think I proved my point, now few words before closing this video. First, the compressor I'm using, like I told you, is an ordinary household compressor and it's not exactly the machine I need to fully demonstrate you the capabilities of the vortex tube while being able to deliver the required by the vortex tube airflow of 220 liters per minute it's not able to sustain the needed pressure the pressure drops really quick and this highly affects the cooling capabilities of the vortex tube so if you're planning to purchase this model or another and there are some quite powerful vortex tubes out there you need a better compressor than the Black & Decker I have here. And by more powerful vortex tubes, I mean a tube capable of producing a freezing air of minus 60 degrees Celsius and a cooling capacity of 32,000 BTUs per hour. Well, fellas, I think that's enough for this product, for this review. If you find the video informative, you know what to do. Bye, guys, and see you soon.